Pretty nuts. I hate it. I I I listened I'm to it. I'm glad the boss just got a DUI. The boss got a DUI? Oh, come on, man. What happened to him? He was being a renegade. They got him. Yeah. How blacked out do you think he was? He probably got done. He's like, I just got done doing a podcast with Barack Obama. <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> okay, like, you're blacked out. Yeah, right, dude. <laughs> no, seriously, he was in my living room, guys. So come on. The Wild Wild West. Here we go, dude. Whoa. 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 I like the Damn. our new producer. Yeah, man. Sean Gardini. The guard dog. The guard dog is in the house, dude. Unfortunately. Pain it pained me. It pains. So. It pains us. I mean, when you're an EP, that's what you gotta do. Sometimes when you're both EPs, <laughs> you gotta use the audacity and Vimeo. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta fire people that you love. Yeah, and man. unfortunately, Lamorp John Lamorp Lees <laughs> has been placed on uh, at least for now permanent suspension. Yeah, Most, indefinite. Suspension. Yeah, very indefinite. Yeah. Uh, permanent's not the right word. Indefinite we should have sent him to ITT Tech. He is going back to DeVry. It should be, yeah, we we should. are funding him to learn how to fucking produce a podcast, which apparently <laughs> is one of the more complicated jobs. <laughs> anyway, lemaire has been fired. He's been fired. He's been and, let go. Uh, he's been suspended. Let's. He's been. He has been suspended. We'll definitely have him back on. We love Lemaire. Yeah. But uh, I think it'd only be appropriate for just a nice moment of silence and remembrance yep. of our good friend, Lemaire Lee. It's been a long day without you, my friend And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again I was just sitting in the back, me and LaMare, we're having great heart-to-hearts Nice That was sweet Really? I love you, buddy yeah. Love you too dude. Yeah, I love you I say a lot of mean junk to you, I joke around, but you know I love you I do Yeah, when good I see you <laughs> <laughs> no, I love him, man. Yes. Dude, that was I was I was sick. I was I sick over the decision, and you know, at the end of the day, he knew. I called I, him, and he was like, "No, I get it. I fucked up a lot. <laughs> it was it was fun." He was probably gaming. He when was I called probably him? he was probably ch- he was probably kicking someone with Chun Li. and was like, "Yeah, for sure." No, I can see that. He All paused right. his game for that. I think he did. He, I did. Yeah, he probably didn't pause his game. Lamar strikes me as a guy who doesn't pause his game. for this. I think he was Just probably. Like, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, I get it. See, ya. I get it. And then after the game, it was probably like, fuck, <laughs> what the fuck happened? <laughs> I've been there. Happens, dude. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, we have to make sure, you know, we secure the video. Well, then Gardini, dude, we needed a new WAP. We needed a fresh WAP. True. Look at that pale WAP. How are you a pale WAP? North Country. Uh-oh. At first words, give it a shot, dude. He's too scared to speak. <laughs> I like that. Though. I like your conservative approach. Not trying to be the star of things like Lemare was. I like a good humble wop behind the... <laughs> it's an oxymoron. True. Shut up, Noah. <laughs> Noah's the senior back dude, there. <laughs> Noah was tense. I gave Noah the news. I was like, hey, man. So I'll let you know. Lemare's been let go. And he was like, what? Really? Yeah, dude. Noah took it hard, man. Oh. Oh, man, that's like, why, why? I'm like, we still love each other, Noah. Yeah, we all love each other. Me, Shane, and Lemare love each other, but we need some time apart. Yeah, we dude, need some time apart. I might, have to take, I might have to take Noah to like a Phillies game, dude. With Lemare. <laughs> He's crushed. I think he's crushed, dude. Yeah, we're going to have to drop him off at Lemare's <laughs> house. You're going to have to watch Lemare play video games every weekend. <laughs> yeah, Noah was devastated, dude. Oh, that hurts to hear. No, um, I, and I, I thinking think. Of, thinking of Noah sad. Yeah. Yeah, he was, what do you mean? I'm like, no, it's not your so fault. I'm not going to see him anymore. He's <laughs> like, no, you're going to see him. You'll see him. I'll be on. We'll have him on. We'll have him over. Then we'll wait. We'll schedule him to come on. He won't show up. And we'll just be like, no, it's not you. It's not your fault. Yeah, Noah will be sitting on the stoop out front with a fishing rod. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't show up. <laughs> yeah, I think Noah was like, dude, am I next? You're not on the chopping block. You're not block, on the chopping block. Guard Dog's your new dad. 
That's your new father. Yeah. <laughs> the guard dog. <laughs> But yeah, that was uh, yeah. what an emotional weekend. Emotional. Uh, here you can see the remnants of his cookie. Yep. The cookie wrapper that you heard on the last episode. There it that is. That you heard and didn't see. There it was. There was the cookie wrapper. Very noisy. Touch that thing. Very noisy. Oh, my God. It's Very loud. noisy. <laughs> <laughs> Cellophane might be one of the noisiest. Actually, in- it's funny because it says serving size. A quarter of the cookie is one serving. True. The per container is 490 calories. <laughs> yeah. 60 grams of carbs. Do you think anyone that buys a, a cookie from the gas station observes like the no serving one, size? No one has. I've Look, I've eaten these cookies before and I've never once even been like, huh. <laughs> Snapped it into force? Oh, I'm not. I'm getting 11 milligrams of calcium. That's good. Nice. That's what I get from these Sheets macadamia cookies. From the entire cookie or per serving? That was per serving. You can get a ton of magnesium. Good magnesium. Do you need man. to boost your mag? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm on to boost and mag. Lately. I'm pretty sure people open those and like are pissed. There's not two cookies in there. You have to be, <laughs> dude. Remember when uh, Beezer got laid up from fucking Seven Eleven Snickerdoodles? Yeah, man. Put him in the put him in bed, dude. Yeah, you can't munch these. No, dude. They get he had doodle tooth. He had a severe case of dudes. What, what was that? His tooth got like hollowed he out. Just got a dead tooth from Snickerdoodles. Damn. Just smoking cigarettes and being like, oh, I'll get some Snickerdoodles. <sighs> And snacking him in his bed. He was laid. He was laid up for like a couple days. Yeah, he was, oh. in, a, <laughs> he was in a tomb. <laughs> anyway, how are you? What's Pretty going good, on, man? Pretty good. The weekend was a uh, good weekend. That was in victorious, DC. dude. Oh man, our nation's capital. We went down to our nation's capital, paid a visit to Lincoln. Dude, it was it was so man. I I like it was funny. I, we were right near the capital, and Shane literally had to yank me by my boots to pull me down off the barricades. Oh. I was going over. I Matt, was going over. He, Matt scaled every fence he could see. I was going over, dude. Of course you were. You're a patriot. I need to go. I need to take a selfie. That that was important for us to go take selfies. We should have. Yeah, we should have recorded an episode from Pelosi's desk. We could have. Easily. They couldn't have stopped us. There's no chance they would have stopped us. But yeah, I was like, scan- I was over the edge. And he grabbed my- he's like, we got a show to do. And I was like, you're right, you're right. Our responsibility <laughs> is to defense. And we both put our hands behind, behind each other's necks. And just like, we got a show to I, I know we both want to go in there and take pictures of ourselves in those fucking swivel chairs. Let's go to the Lincoln Memorial and honor this country properly by reading it around a bunch of tourists that don't <laughs> care and Mexicans <laughs> taking quinceanera photos. <laughs> <laughs> Mexicans love the lads love getting pictures at the memorials. That was wild. What an honorable. There was thing, a mom dude. and daughter. I think they do that just to throw it in everybody's face back home. But they don't. It's like, we made it, baby. True. <laughs> Look it up. This is we're at the memorial right now. True. They could have just been stunting. There might have been no. I think that's lads stunting. Oh, you think that was absolutely no quinceanera? Because there was a mom and her daughter in like just prom dresses. Not yeah, prom dresses. How about the in mom? Twenty six degrees. The mom. Whew, how about those the, the, cans, the tamales dude? Tamales were out. Dude. I, that's the one thing I remember from visiting the Lincoln Memorial. Yeah, massive Mexican tits. Yes, dude. By the reflecting pool. It was crazy. <laughs> I might go back to the reflecting pool and reflect on those big titties. Dude. <laughs> just staring in the water. If you look, dude, that'd be sick. If you go in the reflecting pool and you just see big Mexican tits, and you're like, oh, sweet. <laughs> they were just countries huge. built on. They were Fs. They, they were. Fs. They were Fs. Sure. They were Fs, dude. They were Fas, dude. Absolute Fas. That was crazy. Just getting those bombs in a dress. <laughs> and she probably gave her a talk before the reflection pool. She's like, Donya, one day your upper thoracic mobility will be trashed. <laughs> but you have the biggest titties. Yes. That's the Keynes and Just get ready for having Fs, dude. How do they get Fs out of nowhere? I don't know. Mexican ladies kind of they ball. have a couple kids, dude. They fucking... <laughs> <laughs> she's probably like the transformation is near the incredible hulk yeah, you are alive like, you won't like me when i'm pregnant and then they're just like <laughs> yeah she's like you are lithe and slender senorita but we will pop out a kid and you will transform <laughs> into a unit into a fucking, a fucking wagon <laughs> everyone's gonna notice your bombs at the fucking reflecting pool those things were fucking crazy Dude, they ruled they stopped me in my tracks. They did. They were the most awe-inspiring thing we saw. You went day. one way, I went another way. I was like, look, you can pull me off that fence, but I'm going to get in front row center to these big Mexican bombs, dude. Of course, big government tried to stop us from that, too. Of course. Capitol Police were like, keep it moving, fellas. And we were like, yeah, right, dude. I can stare for seven seconds. That's my legal right as that a citizen. That is illegal. You're right. allowed to stare at a woman, I think, for like, I think it's three seconds. You're within your legal right to just go... Yeah, and then sense. keep it moving. You're allowed, no one can stop you from doing that. I think you can do, I don't know, 
what the what the age thing is. How close can you be? That's uh, another. Uh, you I think gotta observe you, Fauci six feet. You can't be up in the grill staring. Oh yeah, I think there is a foot thing. I think as long as you do, I think if, if you just give it your wingspan. So if you go up, don't touch the grill. But if you go like, I'm legally allowed to do this. I'm measuring the distance I can be, so I can stare at you for full three seconds, and I'll be on my way, man. <laughs> That's why legal right. Yeah. Also, you can hit them with a hard stare in passing. If you're both walking on the sidewalk, you can hit them the whole True. to the point where you can't turn your head. That's the only thing. True. Yeah. You can I mean, stare as long as you want while you're walking and passing on the sidewalk, but it's, the second you turn your head, it is it becomes a bit of a harassment issue. We gotta start bird dogging pussy harder, dude. I think we <laughs> need to. Just turn it around. It's like, look, I don't want anything. I'm just a, I'm just bird dogging you. Do you ever do you ever meet guys that like are in relationships where they're like, yeah, I'm gonna flirt though. Hey, I'm a flirt. Yes. Fucking rules. Yeah, I haven't Dude, run into that in a while. Yeah, I've run into it. Guys no, that flirt? They're like, I'm a flirt. I mean, Sid I'm the kid's a flirt. I'm going to flirt. Sid the kid likes flirt. Is he flirt. a flirt? The woodman's a flirt. Is he a flirt? Oh, woodman? Dude, I don't even... I just pound... If I meet Beezer? women... Beezer? Beezer's a flirt. Is he a flirt? Yeah, absolute flirt. I'm a flirt. Is that R. Kelly or is that, <laughs> Nick, is that uh, Nick Cannon? Ooh, might be a combo. I, I might have got I'm both a, artists I might be right. Kells and Cannon. The ultimate... First assignment. Can you uh, get the... Yeah, go to any fact check that for Fact us. check. I, I believe that's Kells and the cannon. Go, dog. You have a monitor right there. Oh, <laughs> well, this isn't good. Noah's, it, Noah's in his ass, dude. Damn, dude. Noah's on him. Noah wants the throne. No, hurry up and get that answer before him. Beat the guard, dog. That was the prince. Whose phone was that? It's just Kelly featuring T.I. Kelly. and T-Pain. T-Pain? T-Pain. <laughs> oh, man. Gardini, 0 for 1. <laughs> I'm struggling. 0 for 1 on talking. <laughs> He's nervous. <laughs> Dude, what about T.I. got fucking slammed with some sexual trafficking charges? That's all right. They came at... There was a couple girls that came at him and Tiny. Who's Tiny? T.I.'s wife, dude. I don't know. What the fuck? Fuck them. You don't know T.I.'s wife, Tiny? No. Yeah, dude. T. They had a reality show. T.I. and Tiny? And Tiny, yeah. Dude, T.I. apparently... Girls are coming out and being like... He was drugging us and forcing us to be like... I think he was a pimp. I think he was. I think he got. I think he actually was. I think he wore his hat sideways. I think he was pimping. He was absolutely pimp. <laughs> I think he got in trouble. Has I don't think pimping. you can be a woke and then be like, also I was a pimp. Was but. he woke? What? Ti? Well, maybe he's not. I don't think he's woke at all. No, you're right. That I was think the, he's like, I'm gonna check my daughter's hymen. True. Yeah. I think he's very. I think that's his. Is that his right? I don't think that was. I think that that's medical. I don't think you're allowed to. You're probably not, but. You can slip the doctor. See what's going on. You can slip on. the gyno 50 bucks and be like, True. Yo, is that thing intact? Just one or two. Just be like, look, you don't got to say anything. Just hit me with one if it's intact. Two if we got a problem. Yep. Doctor little Paul Revere. Like, She's doing good. One if by tight as hell. <laughs> yes, my daughter's pussy. <laughs> tight as hell. True. That's all you can hope for as a man. Well, it's also Just once. the tightest daughter. Yeah. Once it's on though, because Ti, <laughs> the problem is you Ti. I mean, <laughs> that's funny. That's your honor. It's the your most whole, honorable. My thing. whole world revolves around my daughter's chastity, dude. <laughs> All right, good. I'm glad you worded that. I was waiting to see how you worded that. Now, nah, dude, it's I was all, I was worried. It's all around her chastity, and I'm gonna model it for her. How I'm, so? Just every morning, I'm just gonna come down. Like, hey, what's going on? Be like, I haven't came in forever. True. This is a chaste household. And we don't do that kind of stuff. I actually, I'm going to do that at my wedding. I was like thinking about this. If on the off chance that Brittany gets pregnant before the wedding and she shows up to the wedding pregnant, well, I'm going to make a big. You can decide that. I mean, dude, I'm a that's flirt. up to you. I might flirt with her, dude. I know you're a flirt, dude. <laughs> I might flirt with her. I dude. know you're a flirt and you're a CP king, dude. You might good. be you might be the king of the CP. I've been good. I've been good about not CP, dude. There's nothing better than a raw dog CP. It's literally the point of existence. People say True. their life that flashes before their eyes and they almost die. It's like my life flashes before my eyes every time I roll. I've heard you. CP. Yeah, you've mentioned this raw CPs and you like literally travel the universe. I go to the spirit realm. <laughs> Did you ever see Avatar the Airbender? I've no, I have. I get the arrow on my head. It gets silver, and I just go. I just go fully out of body for like three seconds. What noise would you say you make? I mean, it, it's. You wouldn't know. You it's like can't trying hear to hear it. yourself scream in the Grand Canyon, dude. It's like, you know, it's just like, ah, ah, ah. But it really, it's like, ah. Yeah, I've heard it. Yeah, it's a loud Oh, one. fuck. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like I'm getting Followed tapped. By a lot of people. Sounds like I'm getting sacked. I'm like, <laughs> it sounds like an it NFL highlight. It absolutely sounds like <laughs> NFL films. <laughs> dude, I, I might start selling sex audio. Just the audio. I've heard just it. It's not, up, just I, trust me, up. I've heard your sex audio. 
It doesn't translate. Just miking up. <laughs> Just me, it too. Doesn't. Just me. You know how sometimes if you're you're a man. Yeah. You're lonely. I like guy stuff. Somebody else it's guy stuff. <laughs> Somebody else in the house is having sex. You get a little you're like, whoa, sex is in the house? Yeah. Yeah, you jerk off a little. You might Your edge. sex audio didn't do it for me. What are you talking about? It was a lot of shh. And then True. <laughs> it's like you telling her like, Shh. I didn't want to overwhelm you. And then you would scream. I, I, I literally only heard you screaming. <laughs> <laughs> we get some girl action, dude. This no way, guy dude. House. I want people just to hear me. I'm super possessive, dude. That is what you want. You don't want people to hear your girl in the throes no. of passion. No but way. letting your boys hear you. That's what's up. That's just guy <laughs> stuff, dude. Man. I would think you'd be pumped on me. Being like, I was pumped. I was pumped. I was coming right now. Just imagine every time you nodded in that house and screamed, I was in the room smiling. Yeah. When you would scream, I'd be like, <laughs> like just laying in bed. Dude, the worst part is I genuinely thought I was being very quiet. It was, so, it was, I'm sure the walls were very thin. Yeah. Barn dog. Barn dog. I heard him making love. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm about to ejaculate. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it was usually like, I cannot ejaculate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm finished. Um, but yeah, the guy being, I got abducted this weekend. That was tough. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Me and Gardini were in guy fucking You guys heaven, got to, the best thing about going on the road <laughs> is it's just guy heaven. <laughs> yeah. It's just guys having fun. Oh, yeah. And when you get abducted the way I was, <laughs> sucked from guy heaven straight into a girl house, dude. What is worse than girl house? <laughs> It's tough, dude. Girl, although there, obviously there's some benefits to girl house. Yeah, but guy smells heaven, good. hotel, be smelling good in there. Girls' houses be smelling good as hell. Dude. Girl houses do be smelling good. <laughs> we gotta make this podcast less white, dude. First True, we do need to be less white, like Pepsi. T- I just want to take a cue from Coca Cola. Coca Cola, excuse me, please. <laughs> excuse Pepsi's me. down ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pepsi already. Pepsi put it out a slide like yo can we be less black around the office please <laughs> he's getting a little too black around the office yeah coke put out that very honorable memorandum it was like hey white guys let's be less white how about yeah. that Did what's it mean to be that? less white and then there's a slide of like don't be like aggressive don't presume that you're right all the time yeah it's like so you mean don't be a fucking chick don't be a chick in the office just think yeah. well actually i told you to move that and it's like Ugh. no you didn't no, you didn't. Dumb bitch. You just make up reality in your head all day, and it's wrong. <laughs> it's not what happened. There should be an Adam Curtis on that, just on girl brains. Hypernormalization of, of babes. just girl brains being like, I know I told you this earlier. Yeah, dude. I, I've so many times thought about hot mic in myself. Oh, that's Uber Eats. It could be Uber Eats. Hold on. Pauls. We got a big. Yep. Hello. Hello. Hey. Oh, here I come. Here I come. I'm going to show you my big retarded face. Don't show off for the cam, dude. <laughs> Don't. All right, we're going to take a quick pause, and then we're going to eat, and then we'll, we'll come right back. <laughs> okay, great. And we're back. Woo, baby. What a great nice. meal. That was a good meal. Thank you for that. Needed that. that. Mine was a little a spicy. No, I love good spicy neuters. Mine was a little spicy, man. How are your neuters? My neuters are spicy as hell. <laughs> Still got it. They tried to, they tried to stop us, dude. Tried they to can't. beat it out of me. They couldn't beat it out of us. No way, dude. I was listening to uh, Barack Hussein Obama and Bruce Springsteen's <laughs> podcast today. <laughs> they have a podcast? Yeah, man. Those, those fucking criminals? The renegades, baby. DUI? It's called the Renegades, dude. Uh, it's called the Renegades, and it's the president and a pop star. Yeah, it's the, rock, ba- rock the boss. Star. I was never a big boss guy. Yeah, he uh, never really did it for me. Yeah, I mean, he, you know, I liked a couple of his songs, but Although I think Mayweather came out to "Born in the USA" song when he fought was... against Ricky Hatton. Really turned me entirely. I was kind of cheering for Ricky. Hatton. Ricky Hatton was like a a British. He's like, I just love to fucking drink, mate. I drink and fight, and I'll fuck it. And I was like, yeah, that's my guy. He saw Snatch. That's me. Before yeah, the fight. he did. He did. <laughs> he, was like, he thought he could be Mickey. And then, uh, so it was all that. And it's tough when a black guy from America fights a white guy from England. Yeah. Because then I'm really torn. Am I racist or nationalist? True. Turns out I'm racist and nationalist. So how does that work? Well, I cheer for the black guy from America. Gotcha. I cheer for whoever's from America. 
But then Floyd reminded me of that mm-hmm. when he came out to Born in the USA, which brings me back. That to, pumped you up. Yeah, I was like, damn, America does rule. I'm sorry yeah. I was being racist. Yeah, I mean, that's a, you know. Floyd wasn't the most likable character. True. We're also kind of, you know, <laughs> we're a bunch of, you know, we just listened to a bit of the Shadow Book. We're, we're a ton of moving parts, dude. You got a part of yourself that might be like, I want to see this Englishman win. And then it's all of a sudden, like, oh, and then you, like, oh, I like that. And the other part of yourself is like, no, we like America better. It's like, what? No. Uh. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, yeah. I've been, dude, I'm telling you, this. listen to that uh, book on the shadow. I think it's called Why Good People Do Bad Things. Now I'm like, <laughs> yeah. now I'm like fully. We just scarfed down pints of noodles. I know. And now we're both Quick. like. <laughs> <laughs> I think about that all the time now because I'll like. I'm trying to think of an example. It'll be, ah, uh, it was. I know what it was. Ah, a very autistic. <laughs> ah, I have it. My wife was like, "Remind me to tell you something about someone." Like it was like it sounded kind of gossipy, and I was like, "I'm not participating in gossip." And it was like, "Dude, you know you want to know." Gossip's like, the best. I'm not participating in that kind of. And I'll go back and I have like, dude, I'm telling you, you have multiple parts, and I'm like, I'm not doing it. And I stop thinking about. It. I'm like, so what do you want to tell me? And it just <laughs> boom comes right out. I'm yeah. like, God damn it. Yeah. But yeah. It gets disconcerting when you start thinking about how many parts of yourself there are. Whenever I gossip to you, I'm always like, I shouldn't say this. Oh, it's, it's bad to so say this. It's so hard not to do I'm it. I'm saying it. What is that? Why is it so hard not to do I that? I think I want you to know that I'm not a gossip. No, gossip no. I, obviously, I know that. I'm saying, why is it so hard to gossip? To not. Yeah. If someone, if I have oh, something to juicy, not gossip. if I have something juicy, dude, it like, it like hurts me physically to not be like, to have juicy deets and someone like, hey, what's up? And you're just like, nothing. Yeah. I, it's tough, dude. Nearly impossible. Yeah. It's It's weird. <laughs> it's weird, dude. The spicy noodles. The spicy noodles are getting kicking, back, dude. dude. We start recording. They're probably not halfway down, dude. No, they're, they're still in they're my in the trachea. Esophagus. Still in my trachea. You for think sure. you got the noodles in your trachea? Yeah, for sure. I might pound some water just to push them down. But yeah, what we're, I think we're just fucking. Right. I think we're just messed up right now. I forgot to tell you this. What? Or I forgot to bring you back to this. You were what? You were listening to Barack Hussein Obama and, oh, and the yeah. boss. What were yeah. they up to? Because I hate just, that they are doing a podcast. That's I, I originally was kind of like, and the fact that it was called like the Renegade Podcast, I was like, yeah, this is fucking Christ. So there are a couple of outsiders, bro. These are two people who, you know, have basically live on the outskirts of society. <laughs> oh, man. Nothing bothers, <laughs> nothing bothers me more when people are like, sorry, we're on the outskirts. It's like, you're literally popular culture. Yeah. yeah. You are the entire culture. Yeah, well, he, like that fucking, uh, I was listening to, Billy and Spud were mad about, there's a show called... It's a sin. It's about gay men mm-hmm. in the eighties. Yeah, yeah. I think in England, and it's like, all right, good. It's like they were kind of renegades. Yeah, back then, like yeah. you, that was respected. They were like fighting the AIDS, you know. Yeah, they're they fighting the AIDS. Yeah, they're dying. People were like yelling at them and shit. You're like, stop fucking jerking each you other don't off. You be gay. Sweet warehouse parties, yeah. and they're like, mm. but now, true. I don't want to hear anybody be like, I'm actually gay. So fuck you. It's like, yeah. no, no one cares. It's not impressive anymore. Yeah. Also, though, dude, Does that make sense? there's got. I hear what Back you're saying. Back to the renegade thing, like Obama being like, "I'm a renegade." It's like, dude, you were like one of the craftiest politicians of all time. Yeah. You're not a renegade. Bruce. Bruce was a renegade. Well, Bruce. I don't Bruce know. was a renegade. Bruce Springsteen's dad was 18. schizophrenic. So what? So plenty of guys up. have fucking retarded dads. It's true. That's what I'm saying. Plenty, especially plenty of guys in New Jersey. No offense. Almost everybody from New Jersey. <laughs> no offense, Guard Dog. Has an absolute retard. Guard Dog hails from Jersey, but you you hail from. Uh, Oh yeah, he yelled, he yelled from the north side of Jersey too, mm. Springsteen. But yeah, dude, he 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 talks exactly like my dad's friend Dempsey. He'll come out and be like, yeah, man, you know what I'm gonna. It's it's really mm. I can't do he's it. He's from justice. the Bayou for some reason. Yeah, yeah, he's from New Jersey. He's like, now let me tell you something, uh, man. Ugh. It's pretty nuts. I hate it. I I I listen I'm to it. I'm glad the boss just got a DUI. The boss got a DUI. Oh, come on, man. What happened to him? He was being a renegade. They got him. True. How fucking shitty do you have to be to give the boss a ticket like that? Yeah. How blacked out do you think he was? He probably got done. He's like, I just got done doing a podcast with Barack Obama. <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> okay, you're blacked out. Yeah, right, dude. <laughs> no, seriously, he was in my living room, guys. So come on. So it was his podcast, and Barack Obama was a guest on. There's I no way Barack. So. I think. Obama's I think. No, I think they're. It's their. It's podcast. their podcast. They're friends, dude. They met. They met at a, I think they were at a rally. Neither of them could remember the city. It's just a whirlwind. But the, uh, they met at a rally, and Bruce was playing some songs for them. And, uh, you know, Obama liked, Bruce is kind of shy. Obama likes that. Mm. As you know, under still waters, they run deep, dude. Yeah. Or so, very shallow. And yeah. they're just a puddle. 
<laughs> so, you know, there's also that side of it. Well, Bruce, dude, it was funny. I listened to it to like, I was like, fuck, this sucks. And I listened to it and I was like, it's pretty engaging. Them talking? I'm yeah, sure it is. It I'm decent. sure it's very engaging. But, Both of them are very charismatic men. Yeah, but it was still like, uh, I don't know. It just bothers me. It still bothers me. Of course it should. It I should pull, bother I, you. I busted it. It's called the Renegades. And it, basically, Brock was like, what? why would you be an outsider? You know, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, I'll tell you, Brock, I, uh, my dad was a schizophrenic guy. <laughs> <laughs> Brock, Mr. Mr. President. They both had Pennywise. Irish parents, though. They were both, shout out to Ireland. That's probably why I was like, well, this is all right. Because they were oh, like, yeah. yeah, he's like, my grandparents were Irish. And, you know, they were a bit of outsiders. I was like, yeah, so I'm an outsider. I'm renegade. Okay. Yeah, Irish are outsiders, even though we're literally the entire population now. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, oh, I'm a renegade, too. That's cool. What else you got to say, Bruce? Well, you and me are renegades. Big time, dude. Big time. That's probably what it was. This was my shadow, just being like, dude, you're a fucking renegade. Dude. You're not. The, the, you're yeah. You're listening to guys claim renegade status. Yeah. Like, but it was it was funny. He and Barack Obama was like, yeah, my uh, my grandparents were I- Scotch Irish as well. I was like, fuck yeah, dude, let's go. Oh, that was when my national. That? That's when you're my nationalism that? fucking crushed my hatred of just yeah. popular calls. Like, no, oh, okay, that's cool. That is tight. But yeah, it was. Uh, I'm not done it yet. But yeah, the idea of it bothers me. And it, dude, it should. F- hearing those two do the same awkward podcast like intro ramble as every like I guess we're doing this now. I was yeah. like, God damn it, get it together. Yeah. It made me sick to my stomach to be doing podcasts actually. Really? Just for the moment when they were just like, Oh yeah, I don't know. What are we doing? Is this thing working? I'm like, fuck, that's what we do. Shut up. We're renegades. You guys aren't. Sure, they're fucking hacks, dude. <laughs> there are fucking they are. They probably listened. In fact, I bet they did. <laughs> they probably did. I bet at least one of them was like, what's all this hubbub about about this? Damn, I'm going to watch this clip. They probably, we probably inspired them. I bet Barack Obama saw that clip. Yeah. And was like, dude, that fucking <laughs> that rules. Funny? I wonder if he did. Dude. Oh, I dude. wonder if it was a briefing. They were telling like, songs. Mr. President, you need to see this. This is fantastic. Actually, Trump dog was in office. Yeah. The dog probably didn't watch it. Brock, yeah, Brock probably saw it. Brock saw it. But dude, the, they talk about <laughs> the time. That, when they talk about the time they met, they're like, you were kind of shy. And I like that about you. We talked. And, like, you know, Bruce Springsteen just says something like, when you're an outsider, huh? <laughs> you're like, you got to speak your voice. When you're an outsider and you get paid hundreds of thousands to perform for thousands of people that love you, <laughs> man, it's tough being an outsider. He was talking about way back when. Back when, when he was he, 17? When he was 17, dude. And he had something the world needed to hear him say. And he's like, you got to be, you got to be kind of. You gotta have the, an ego, and Barack Obama's like, yeah, you mean like a megalomaniac to think the world needs to hear what he has to say? <laughs> he said that? Yeah. Oh, man. Barack's got the jokes, dude? Barack was like, he's like, well, like a megalomaniac, basically, because they're both talking about how they just were burning with desire to like let the world hear what they had to say. Do you remember that song, Megalomaniac by Incubus? Yes. I, dude. Step down. That's all I, that's all I can think w. about. Bush. That's all I can think about. <laughs> Whenever I hear that word, all I think about is the Incubus, Incubus song. Incubus song? Remember when that's what Megalomaniac. it used to be? Yeah. Wasn't that nice when the protests were just like Incubus being like, you're a fucking megalomaniac. Yeah. When people were pissed that like. He even was... then I was like, shut the fuck up, Incubus. <laughs> I remember being a kid and hearing that and be like, shut the fuck up. I didn't like. Yeah, I, I hear it's, you. It was always phony to me. Yeah. Overtly political comedy or comedy, just like art is kind of tough. It's like, I don't agree with this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the. Uh, yeah, I, I remember I, did, I didn't like George Bush when I was younger. I was fully like, this guy is fucking doing bad stuff. Really? Yeah, I thought he was doing like really evil stuff. That was my feeling on it at the time. Really? Yeah, and I, I watched everyone being like, this is bullshit. The government's lying. And I was like, remember being like, yeah, all right, here we go. And then, dude, now you have like Berkeley students at Berkeley getting a uh, professor fired who was like teaching propaganda, saying like he was teaching people how to recognize corporate and government propaganda. Why, they Why is he getting fired? Because he was spewing fucking hate, dude. You can't go against corporate giants and say they're propagandizing us students were like this is dangerous i think because he touched on some of the covid stuff how countries used it to their advantage mm. and they were like you're fucking the students are freedom fighters of this country we're like get them out of here the guy's been teaching it for 30 years i think spud was telling me this that's no good that's a weird flip dude i remember being a youngster and being like yeah he, you think george bush the war criminal be like oh that's cool no i remember supporting him more because my classmates felt that way because he thought he's a war criminal they were like he's a piece of shit and i was like w rules w fucking i had that trump in me from day one where everyone was like trump's a fucking piece of shit i was like trump's the best <laughs> you were, you were just you, you were practicing i was who would have thought and then when everyone was like barack obama is king i'm like i hate him <laughs> 
<laughs> you guys are being gay about this. Well, they they threw a jab at uh, Brock Hussein pretty hard, and I think there was the Adam Curtis thing when they talk about the shift of wealth, like a trillion dollar shift of wealth, leaving the lower class to the uh, elites during yeah. that time. That was pretty bad. He helped the elites. I think so. I mean, that was a whole. That was a whole. What pack- do I know? That was a whole package deal. They took out the factories. That's why me and Bruce are outsiders, dude. That's why I had to work at those shitty jobs, dude. They destroyed the factories. I was just a boy. Dude, there was one, po- <laughs> <Jesus Christ. laughs> there was one point where him and... Uh, so they're talking about the friendship. And, you know, that, that's like... Brock was like, well, you know, you, yeah, you, you egoic, megalomaniac. And they're like, yeah, but that's what you do. You you take your megalomania and just hollow yourself out over time and blah, blah, blah. And you just become for the fucking people. And they're like, yeah, that's what we obviously did. And I'm like, yeah, obviously, that's what we all did. But the... Uh, so they're like going on. But either way, it was like something you would hear that you're like, yeah, okay. And then Brock is like, that's why. That's why I want to be friends because you just hit me with like that deep stuff. And like, we got to hang out. He's like, so we're in the White House. Yeah, I wonder if he would still feel that way if Bruce didn't, if if Bruce wasn't world famous. If he just saw a guy playing guitar and was like, whoa, that guy's deep. That's why I like him. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's very circle jerky in that regard. He's it like, is. And then Michelle wanted us to hang out because you know how you're – you own your mistakes in your marriage, and I could learn a little. It's just like it's just like cheesy office dude shit. And yeah. uh, but at one point they're like talking about how he's like, I was in the white. He's like, you were in the White House and playing some songs. We're singing along. It's Motown. But every time, any chance he gets, he goes. Bruce Springsteen goes. Yeah, I was playing some of that Motown. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so funny. <laughs> but he's like, and Brock's like, and I was singing along, and uh, there were some libations that occurred. It's like. I hate. I hate. That's what, just dog whistling for kids. True. You think it was hot dogs? I think the libations were <laughs> young kids. Do you think Bruce had this like boy on the piano, and just like yeah, oh. he had one for each finger. Oh, you think they were just absolutely scissor hands? Yes, with children. It's oh. like Bruce, take your fingers out of those kids' buttholes and play me some piano. <laughs> Man, I did hate those concerts that they would do. Barack Obama would have like Paul McCartney come sing in the White House. Yeah, it's just like, shut up. It's a. I think it's just a big power trip, dude. Just being like, well, we're here for hope and change, and then it's like we're gonna just have the coolest parties in front of everybody. Yeah, yeah, it's just some weird stuff you do. You know, you know what you should watch. What you would like this? It's uh, Okani put me onto it. It's uh, the Steve Bannon interview on PBS. Really? Yeah, on Frontline. It's like a two-hour interview of him just. Spewing, dude. Let's He's Alex Jones up. level. Like you ask him a question, he just goes. Yeah. With names and facts and shit. I think he might be retarded or the goat. Yeah. I figured it out. Bannon's hard to nail down. I can't tell if he's retarded. Did you? St- or if he's next level. Next level. Did you see his debate against the guy who runs the Atlantic? No, I did Bannon not. beat that guy in a debate. I'm sure he did. The uh, Bannon's he, a monster, dude. He's dude, a populist. I'm a, I'm a populist. He now. went to Canada. I mean, explain to me this, dude. How can you have a populist movement within a functioning democracy? How's that even a thing? What do you mean? They're like, there's pop. We gotta stop the rise of populism. It's like, how do you stop populism in a democracy? Isn't a well functioning democracy a populist movement? Of course. They well, always- I think populism. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> I'm with you on that. <laughs> do you even think about that? <laughs> Sorry, we're microdosing. <laughs> It's time for me. I should dose today. Can you I should, drive a car after this? I think you can. <laughs> It'd be really funny if I get in a Tiger Woods-esque wreck no, at the dude. end of this episode. You're like, oh, that's why. He was under the influence. No, you think Tiger drugs. was Did microdosing? You? I think Tiger was macrodosing. I think Tiger has trouble with you macrodosing. Think he was tri- dude, do you think Tiger was tra- tripping? I feel bad for Tiger. That sucks. That ah, fucking blows, dude. Because he had fucked up legs before. If you, Breaking news. Tiger Woods got in a fucking horrific accident. Yeah, and his man. legs are mangled. What was he pushing? I don't know. Probably something sick. He was driving like Escalades in the dock. In the documentary about him. Probably the documentary stressed him out too. Yeah. Everybody was talking about his shit again. Yeah, man. Although everyone was kind of defending him. I believe. True. Everyone was like, is this what we were all mad about? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's got to suck to watch though and have to go through all that stuff again. For sure. Dude got fucking crushed, man. He did. I'm scared of your drugs, dude. It's no big deal. I mean, you don't, dude, again, I'm a dude if you don't want. It's just a little, it's very, very mild. <laughs> Um, I gotta stop taking drugs. <laughs> it's like, what? Oh, what's this? Homemade? Great. <laughs> I've I've had your tinctures before, dude. If this True. is one of those, I'm no, gonna be no, sleeping no. on Billy's couch tonight. No, you I'm won't. I'm gonna be, give it an hour or two. See how I feel. You won't be half an All hour right, tops. Good. Half you'll an just, hour tops. You'll start grooving. Start grooving. 
pukes are going to go. It'll just be like, this is tight. Really? Yeah. You'll be like, yeah. I kind of Wait, like so that. you guys are saying microdosing like it doesn't affect you at all, but you're saying it, it does affect It does, you. but not like it, it. The idea is you're supposed to get like the. So you're just getting a little high. Lowest off threshold amount. Ideally, and there's, there's a ton of people like argue about this. You're supposed to get a sub threshold amount. Like you notice it, but you're not all day. You know when you're like stoned, you're, you're like, I'm stoned. I don't stoned, get high I'm very stoned. well. So when you're stoned, all you're thinking about for the most part is how stoned you are. For the most part, it's like coming back every 15 seconds. You're like, I am fucking stoned. Yeah. It's all you're really doing. You're just like, oh, man. So with this, what's going to happen here? You'll just be, you'll be chilling. 30 minutes later, you'll just be like. I'll be locked in. You'll be locked in. Ready to in. make business moves. You'll Is be that what microdosing yes. does? Yeah, you'll be locked in. It's very, it's very mild. Very. Are you sure me. I'm not just going to giggle and get tired? I don't think so. I'm I sensitive. guess you don't really get tired off mushrooms. No. They, when you take a little bit of them, they're more, they have more of a uh, stimulating effect. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Kind of like your visual acuity sharpens, your hunting skills increase. <laughs> I'm gonna be hunting for a Roy Rogers at a yeah, rest dude, stop. Yeah, you're gonna be like, oh, there it is. You're gonna see it in the horizon. Be like Valley Forge exits 15 miles. <laughs> I'll just know it. But yeah, you'll be fine. You'll be totally fine. <laughs> this episode's wacky. You think it's it is a little wacky, dude? I like. It. I mean, we're healing, dude. We are healing. We're healing from what? From firing our producer. Oh yeah, I forgot about him there. <laughs> Fired I our producer. Forgot all about that guy. Uh, the Renegades podcast, the corporate elites, and the you know Washingtons trying to rub their fucking elbows on this table. And Bro, you edge gotta, into you our gotta listen to Bannon. I'll, I'll check it. It was sure. awesome. Yeah, dude. O'Connor told me, and O'Con- you know O'Connor. Yeah, what was dirty it? lib. He was like, no, Bannon's the man. If you really? listen to this, you're like, Bannon's kind of the man. Yeah, people think he's like a like, the, like he's the devil. He's a Nazi. Maybe he is. I don't know. I'm sure a lot of people I think, will he, tell I think us. he smacked his wife up a little. I think he gave he's his Irish wife Catholic. a little smack down. He's a good Irish Catholic. A Navy boy. He's a he Navy is a Navy boy. boy. Yeah, man. Norfolk, Virginia. That's where he's from. Of course he joined the Navy. True. Great shipyard out there. How would you not join the military living down there? Dude, I was there for one week. I saw the Lincoln Memorial. Oh, yeah, I was yeah, checking yeah. out Arlington from my hotel room. Dude, the Lincoln Memorial, I was like genuinely just kind of like... Dude, oh. I told you, I took a date there and got like teary eyed once. Yeah, I was hung over. You know me. When I'm hung over, I get very emotional. Heard that. I was just standing in the Lincoln Memorial, like reading his yeah his uh, inaugural, his second inauguration. I, I never know second State of the Union. I think I never was. read this stuff before. I only I only oh, ever went the in best. there. It's fucking awesome. Gettysburg Address rules. Dude, it, it fired me up. I was genuinely because I have, I was like you know you know me bro. I'm cynical sometimes. I'm like I'm so cynical. This whole thing is just bullshit. This everyone's lying. I read the thing. I'm like, damn, are people really trying no, to America make an awesome rules. country? America yeah. rules. That's I read We've that. We lost I'm like, it to Fuck. the elites and the technocrats. True. We need to rise up. True. We need Bannon to fucking. Bannon's away. king. He Although he it. was he was shouting out Palin a little more than I thought he would. He likes Palin. He thought she was good for the populist movement. And he, and he was like, hot. Trump Trump was smart. People act like he wasn't. He was like smart enough to know not to fuck with Obama. Yeah. Like he knew Obama could take him politically. Mm-hmm. But he was like anybody else. He thought he could beat 100%. It was like sick. Damn. You got to hear the end of this. Bannon. So Trump fired Bannon. Mm. Or, or I think, or they, whatever. And of course, once he left the office, Trump was like, that guy sucked. Yeah. Fuck that guy. He was a loser. What do you call him? Uh, sloppy Mike. He called him something. <laughs> sloppy <sighs> but, Sloppy uh, Steve. But Steve was like, old sloppy Steve was like, I don't care at all. He's yeah. like, I'm not in this. He's like, I knew Trump. I knew that was never going to end. Like, you're never going to get a pat on the back for doing your job. Yeah. But he was like, one thing I am happy about is I know. He was like, we dis- we destroyed the Clinton crime family. Like, that's what he was like going on about. And he Damn. was like, he was like, I know. The one thing that makes me happy about my time here is when the New York Times writes Hillary Clinton's obituary, it's going to say lost to Donald Trump in 2016. It was just like, oh, damn. Vicious, sloppy dude. Steve. Yeah, dude. Very vicious. Hating the Clintons. He hated the Clintons. Damn. It was sick, though. Like, just he, he talks about like the behind the scenes stuff about like, he, he refers to it as Billy Bush weekend when the Billy Bush tapes came out. Billy Bush weekend. By the bus. <laughs> yeah, it, was like a, it was Billy Bush weekend, dude. Imagine we being Steve Bannon out. during that. During Billy Bush weekend? Yeah. That'd be a wild It should be a holiday. That'd be a wild day. That'd be a holiday. That should be a holiday. It's Billy Bush. We're heading down the beach. It's Billy Bush weekend. Yeah, this is the this was the weekend that the the government overthrew the fucking wretched pussy allegations. Yeah. That was that was the weekend we should it's celebrate when we found out our moms weren't as thin skinned as we thought. My yeah. mom was like, That's just how guys talk. True. I was like, fuck yeah. She's like, that's that was a harsh reveal. Yeah. When every conservative woman was like, Yeah, of course that's how men talk. Yeah. Like, wait, you knew? 
Yeah, dude. You knew about guy. You knew what goes on in guy heaven. <laughs> we get back to the hotel. It's just guys laying in twin beds. Like tonight was so fun, dude. <laughs> you kick the sheets, dude. Did you grab any pussies? I grabbed six tonight. I How grab, many pussies? I almost did you grabbed grab? a girl's pussy. I thought about grabbing her pussy <laughs> the whole time. All I could think about was grabbing. Her That's pussy. all, dudes. Do in the locker room. I should have started. I was in a. I took a Maya to swim lesson today. I was in a locker room with some dads. I should have been like. You guys get any fellas? Blow jobs? <laughs> you guys get get your dick sucked? You should start locker room. Uh, yeah, Planet Fitness fucking, locker room talk. Oh my Just God. like anybody here getting any fucking clit this week? <laughs> <laughs> just start drying yourself off. Oh my! Just come out naked and be like, dude, jerking it, dude. Start like, <laughs> who here got pussy this week? Ooh, dude. That's again. There's another. These are the multiple parts of myself. I was in a locker room alone, and I was like, I have to start walking around these naked, like just going like wild with it, dude. I'm just being in there and just fully, just being in there for hours. <laughs> Don't leave. Don't leave. Just work out for like 20 minutes. And then, or I might work out naked in the locker room. Just go in there and just do like up. Do your stretches. Step ups on the bench. And just, just like, <laughs> sir, like, come to the fucking locker room. <laughs> yeah, this is locker room talk. Dude, that's guy heaven. Guy heaven is actually being naked for sure. But. Uh, but there's a part of me that's going like you're too young. Me. You're too young. Oh, if you're man. if you're young and naked, we in gotta locker bring room, it back. If you're young and naked in the locker room, you are <laughs> you're disturbing the balance of guy heaven. <laughs> there's a very thin balance of it needs to be older men naked. True. If you're young and naked, everyone's like, "What the fuck's Fuck. going on with this guy?" Yeah, I think it might be scary. Your, your pubes have to be like gray. There your pubes have to be out of control. Yeah. Your pubes. Have you seen geezer pubes? Yeah. In the locker room. Oh yeah, dude. It's just wild. Dude. I stay, I, t- I get what my are you full. Doing? Th- I get. I'm checking my pubes to see how much longer I have. Whoa, they're coming up over the belly button. Let me see that. <laughs> you see him? You got a trail, dude. I got a way. I got a ways to go. I got a couple. I got a couple polys, dude, on the side. But yeah, I take my full three seconds. You think they like hang out of your belt sometimes? Probably. I'm sure they do. I never it's even thought about that. Hell, just dude. pubes hanging over. Come on, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. I, I take when I'm in my locker room with dudes. I take my full three. My legal three. I just go and like the guys' dicks. Yeah, full legal. It's thing. almost impossible not to. You have to. Yeah, every single dude that's naked in a locker room, every dude in there is like catching a peek at that thong. You have to. I mean, it's you can't not put it that way. Yeah, especially if it's like a guy you know. I can yeah. say I, I'm from a relatively small town. If you hit a locker room, that you're gonna know everyone in there. People are gonna talk. You'd be like, that's Mister fucking Brenner. Yeah. People <laughs> are gonna see, talk. You know, Mister Brenner's dick's weird. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go to school and you gotta try uh. to keep that secret. You yeah. want to talk about gossip? You want to talk about hot gossip? True. Mr. Brenner's <laughs> thick, tiny dick. I saw Mr. Brenner's dick. Yo, I got to tell you. Remind me. I got to tell you something. I do. <laughs> <laughs> remind me. I got to tell you something later. Did I tell you about I knew someone who went to uh, AA when we were in high school? And then they came out and told us. To AA? They told us everyone's dads who were in there. They're like, oh, that guy's in there. And that guy's in there. And that guy's. <laughs> oh, came out no. Like, they broke the number one rule. <laughs> they're like, guess who's in there? And I'm like, who? They're just like broke it everyone's down. Everyone's dead. They're like pretty much everyone's dead. Oh, I heard a terrible story. We got to discuss this a little. What? We got to – do they still put your face in the paper if you get caught with a prostitute? I think so. They need to cut that out. Yeah, it's horrible. That's the worst Who'd thing. they get? So this this girl I know – Mr. Was, Brennan? This girl <laughs> – Mr. Brenner. Remember, Mr. Brenner. Mr. Brenner. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you might know his dick from the locker room. Yes. <laughs> at, at the Mechanicsburg Planet Fitness. He's been using it on hookers. <laughs> yeah. He, Mr. Brenner. Yeah. <laughs> was getting hookers. No, this kid, a girl who sucked me away from fucking guy heaven was telling me this story what? about uh, there was a kid in her hometown whose dad Got caught. Yeah. And put his face in the news. Yep. And then he hung himself Whoa. after he lost, you know, his family left him. Yeah. Of course, he lost everything. They and took he his was camera. A small, they take your Camry, too. They I take your Camry. It gets repoed yeah. immediately. Oh. And then, but still, it's, it's a small town. So it was enough that literally every single person was like, holy shit, did you see the news about Mr. Brenner? Fuck. Mr. Brenner was using hookers. Damn. He was coming with hookers. He was coming with hookers. And they're like, we don't pay for cum around here in this town. Yeah. You don't pay for cum here. That's a really shitty thing they were doing. I, I hope they stopped doing it because that's like, that crime is not even close to that punishment. No. That's like medieval stock stuff. It's ultimate. It, that's exactly what it is. I think the, the problem they were having was like the sex trafficking stuff. So sort of like, and they, I think they were like, we got to take it to these Johns real hard. So that was the thing. They used to just like, back in the good old days. They would grab the girls and just bump them into a they paddy wagon. They would bully the girls. Fucking whores. And then that became politically kind of, you know. Well, that was actually wrong. 
I know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it, I don't know if the PC police had anything to do with this one. No, I, I think I think they yeah true. They were like there was that whole free the sex worker movement where they're like no the girls are the victims. So they're like all right, well let's fucking pin it on these yeah. horny ass suburban dads. They're more they're like, guilty, but at the same time not guilty at all. I'm saying freedom, dude. They're just fucking stiff as hell in their khakis. It's too getting, bad that guy couldn't just own that, you know. Just take a smiling a mugshot. Boy. Just in the picture in the paper, he's like... Hit it with one of these. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's... Like, what's he so happy about? It's like, oh, yeah, read the article. He just came inside of a sex worker. I told you, there was a guy when we would work... We'd knock down a parking garage and we would sit. I was... Uh, part of my job was I had like a lanyard and I, I was like hooked because I was on the edge. And like, you know, Osha or whatever was watching me. So I had to like sit tied to this thing and their guys would walk into the wishy-washy. So we would take, I would be like, do you think that guy's going in or not? Because there'd be yeah. like other people working and we'd stop. Like, yes or no. And like, you know, be like, I bet he is. I bet he's not. And then you'd see people going in and coming out. And there, you know, people would like, one guy <laughs> came out of the wishy-washy and did a full to us and just kept moving. Wow. I was like, wow. That's the guy. That's what you got to do. That's dude. what you got to do. You I gotta mean, leave. It just sucks with your kids. Because then like. I know your kids. But then you got to explain to them like. I'm horny kids. Kids, I'm horny. Someday you'll be horny as hell. Yeah. And you'll get it and you'll be like, damn, my old man was the best. He was horny as hell. He took a public flogging and smiled. I also say it's there's something to be said about not going and starting a, a an affair. You know? It's like, dude, you're it's like the Ghostbusters trap. You gotta like yeah. you, you can't just you gotta come into something that's that can a, hold that energy. That's that Patrice joke. It was in the Patrice doc. This it was uh he's like talking about men cheating. Mm -hmm. And he's like, they're going out secretly. To, to come to, to hide it from you because they care about you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if you're going out to get a hooker instead of cheating, it's discreet. It's even better. It's discreet. That Your wife should somewhat understand. That way they're not like, you don't have like a girl, a side girlfriend and stuff. That, that's just a fucking ticking time bomb. Of course it is. You want a professional. You need to get Show milked. up. You need to get milked out of a table. Yeah, dude. Just get milked out of a table. There should be some leeway to that. There should be protocol where it's like, it should be, honestly, we should medicalize it. Where it's not even like a sex thing. It's get, like, just get milked. Yeah. Just have it like the dude, any of those nurse practitioners or whoever at like urgent care. I mean, they, they would, I mean, it's essentially that already. If you find a nurse practitioner, she's going to milk you. I think they should. It should, that should be covered under a med, that should be decriminalized, to be honest. Not even decriminalized. Sex work should be fully mm, medicalized. That'd be nice. Going into urgent care, just a fat black nurse at the desk just like what are you here for you're like i actually need milk she's like mm -hmm, come on <laughs> yeah. just gets up. i mean dude we need it dude and just be like just come home from the doctor what they say be like i was full of cum they had to pump me like, oh man really be like yeah like, i'm all good now but i have to go back next week to make sure it's all <laughs> <laughs> keep going back to make sure it's cleared up <laughs> dang this thing won't go away i'd be like one of those guys who like go to the emergency room for vicodin i'd be like um oh, i gotta get like dude you just came yesterday I'd be like oh no it's fucking crazy you're i'd be in the hospital system like you were just at u penn yesterday I'd be like what no that's you can't get milked again sir like, sorry, go home. give me the fucking milk <laughs> milk me put them against the wall just you better milk <laughs> Daddy needs milk right now. <laughs> and that would be tight. If you got your physical and then they were just kind of like. Oh, looks that like you're be, a little cumful. That would be the uh, the only thing, though. The catch would be it would be whoever was on staff. So it might be like a 28-year-old like medical doctor, one of those McSteamy dudes that come out. And they might just be like, what's up, bro? And it's fucking cranky. Well, you'd, have to that, just, you'd have to be it's medical. I think the point, I think a good thing we could do is adopt kind of like the Catholic. Uh, oh. Just have a veil. You know what I mean? Glory hole it. You're thinking about glory hole. Yeah. yeah. You lay on top of a table. You don't know who's down there. And you just. Could be a guy. Could be. You're getting milked. <laughs> All right. You got you to gotta pretend who it is in your mind. <sighs> Sometimes, yeah, you could get tricked. It could be a, could be a kid. Really? Could be an intern, dude. You think it'd be an intern? <sighs> you better pray to Christ it is. He's just trying to talk to the screen. You're like, how long have you been here for? <clears throat> Every once in a while, you hear that cough underneath the table. It's like, fuck. <laughs> Fuck, I'm gay. <laughs> oh, can you cough again? I wasn't sure. Yeah. True, yeah. That'd be tough. You gotta fart. That's a good indicator. If you want to get some noise out of underneath the table, <laughs> just let off a fart and see if you hear like a... <sighs> if there's no laugh, you're, 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 you're clear. You wouldn't be able to tell, dude. Doctor, if you got a guy who's like a doctor, there's just some soft hands, man. Yeah. You wouldn't... Uh, you, you could go uh, full grip, please, and just test the grip strength, like the thing at the boardwalk, and be like, oh, <laughs> that's a feller. That's a feller. This feller's got me by the prick. 
I think that's a good idea, dude. I think the grip strength is dude. very funny. <laughs> to be like, full grip strength, please. <laughs> oh, that's a fella. Oh, shit, it's a fella. <laughs> God damn it. Like, I'm all good now. <laughs> fella be t- fucking but that grip up, strength? Though. True. That'd be tough, dude. <laughs> full grip. Or you could say like more grip, please. Yeah. You you wouldn't need. That's a thing, too. That's a negotiation you need to have while you're getting a uh, old-fashioned. It's like how much grip strength do you like? Yeah. I might I might start demanding like full grip strength. Just a slow slow jerk, full grip strength. <laughs> Do you ever hit yourself with that? Have I ever what? Give yourself full grip strength yeah, on of a course. slow jerk. <laughs> Never while I'm masturbating, but every once in a while I'll just squeeze the hell out of the shaft for the fun of it. I'm saying if you're you should try this. You ever do that while you're watching TV? Yeah, just dude. like constantly. <laughs> constantly. <laughs> like stings stings the tip for some reason. <laughs> That's guy heaven. <laughs> That's all I wanted to do in the room is just test my might, dude. <laughs> yeah, will I yelp? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'll catch myself doing that. I only put my hands in my pants and be like, and just violently adjust myself. And she's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "Just you know." She wouldn't know. Give me a good squeeze. I wonder if they would know. Do girls? They check. They probably get nuts down there when no one's looking. Oh, dude, just reaching down there, just like. Yeah. Scooping something out. Just slap themselves. Something's in there. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's why they grow their nails. So they can just scrape crud. So How crud do- They could probably get crudded up like crazy. They can. If they don't take care of themselves. Girls can get crudded up big time, dude. Yeah, especially after they have their periods. Yep. It's probably just filled with crud in there. It's just crud, dude. It's just, yeah, it can nah, just I don't be. like that. Yeah, man. It can be some. Wicked stuff. That's what they're dealing with. Welcome to the Renegade Podcast. I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm Brock Hussein Obama. Fine, I'm Bruce Springsteen. I, I guess. call Brock Hussein Obama. You be Brock Hussein. I'll no, be Bruce. you're Brock. No, I'll be you're Bruce. more of a Brock. I'll be Bruce. I'm uh, more of a Bruce. I would say bit of a Bruce type myself. Really? Yeah, man. My dad's fucking retarded. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, growing up in Jersey, my dad was a bit of a fucking retarded guy, so shit was tough. Yeah. Once the factories left, all the retarded guys didn't really have much to do. <laughs> Besides drink and hit us. <laughs> so I started coming up with anti American music. Yeah, I was uh had a lot of black friends for the record. Bro. Oh, did he bring that yeah. That's yeah. probably so into Motown. True. He you had it, bro. If you're going to the clubs down there was the greasers down there who just copied black they were just copying black fashion anyway. So the greasers were just wiggers? Yeah, that's what they so said. So like Grease was a movie about like wigs. If they remade it today, pretty much they'd be freestyling. We could we could remake they'd be freestyling Greece. all those songs outside of like a closed mall. Yep. Yeah, exactly. They'd be taking ecstasy. The old E bombs, I'm saying. Whoa, not, not Molly. Not Molly. Whoa, don't come at my culture. <laughs> not Molly. E bombs. They'd be taking like old, outdated E bombs, fucking pushing Honda Civics yes. hard as fuck. That would have been, been a race between two souped up Honda Civics. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty fun. That's fun stuff. Yeah, but yeah, they. It's uh, fun to think about. Bruce was saying, he was like, if you went to those clubs down south, Route 9, I love Route 9. I love all the roads in New Jersey. He loves New Jersey. The great town of whatever, the, wherever he's from. Trenton. Oh, it was what the fuck? from Trenton. Please look up Bruce Springsteen's. Actually, Garditi, do you know it offhand? I feel like you should. Yeah, you're from New Jersey. Pretty sure it's Sayreville or Freehold. Freehold, that's what it was. Never heard of either of those Check. crap towns. I'm from the great town of Freehold, population 10,000. <laughs> <laughs> man i was way off on one i was uh, somebody was asking me the population of mechanicsburg they're like it's probably like a small town it's probably like a hundred thousand right i was like yeah probably like a, i looked it up it's like eight thousand really? like holy shit I'm damn you from a small town from, i'm just a small town boy well, first of all dude when you hear my song and me and bruce's song small town that's actually one of my songs it's not about the town You're from a big old Yo, town it's about everything bro it's all the small we're all a small town dude he loves small towns. I wonder if he ever got <laughs> sick of them and has to keep pretending he likes them. Yeah, especially nowadays. Yeah. You have to be like, I love small towns except for everything they believe in. <laughs> I don't agree with their politics. He did come out and say, and I, I didn't listen to the whole thing, but he was like basically saying how there was a, a thing in, uh, I already forget the, his name, the name of the town, Long, Longport, Longhold. Freehold? Freehold Township, New Jersey. Thank you, Freehold Free Township. Township. There was a uh, car full of black dudes that got just shot with shotguns. So there was some boys in that small town were getting rowdy. And that's when Bruce went up the day after. There was like there was riots and shit. And Bruce, you know, he saw some of his boys. He's also started his, strumming. He wore 
all dungarees. He full dungaree the, he, That was a bandana flag. So he's like, yeah. Ripped the sleeves off. <laughs> Immediately, he was like, I'm not having this. I got to fix this. But he said he did. He was trying to talk to some of his black friends, and they were like, not today, Bruce. He was like, I understand. I wouldn't understand. Yeah. Well, he, uh, but he was saying, he was like, it was the like, best way for us to get past this is for us not to talk. Yeah. That's the best way to solve these problems well, is Brock, for us to understand we can't talk. It was so funny because Brock was like, well, that was him leaving the door open, but just saying, like, not right now. Yeah, but it's good. Saying, I think it's important for guys like Barack Hussein Obama to speak for the entire black community. For sure. Yeah. But, yeah, dude, it was uh, it was weird. It, it, he was talking about that, but he did say, I think he was talking about how he's like, you know, my family is a bunch of rednecks, but I love them. He's like, I love them. They're the people I love. There's small town folks. They ain't perfect, but they're the people I love. It's like so maybe he still maybe maybe he loves Trump. Bruce Springsteen might fucking love Trump. I doubt it though. Yeah, definitely not. Yeah. Trump's Unless he's best. deep on, he might be he might be deep undercover. Yeah. But no, I I doubt he is. But yeah, that was his whole thing of him as being like, Yeah, we got a lot of guitars up here and let's let's keep a pick ready in case I want to make some music with you, Barack. I, I bet like, Barack, yeah, Barack. Like, I've been known to sing. He said he's been known to sing. Yeah. If he has some live, I bet he's got a good voice. He's got a great voice. I bet he can sing. Probably does. Brock's yeah. outsider story was sick. What he was just this? lived in Hawaii, and he had, he was chilling with his Scotch Irish grandfather, and people would come up and be like, "Oh, is you know like is he like Hawaiian?" And uh, his grandfather would be like, "He's actually son of the king of Hawaii, like you know royal yeah. blah 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 blah." And he's like, "But I didn't look like anyone." So he was jammed up about that. Yeah. Bruce was like, my dad was fucked up. He's like, I didn't look like anyone. And they're just yeah. like, born. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's the whole episode is just them. It'd be funny if his, his Hawaiian dad was like, hey, this this kid is black as hell. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> this black kid? No, he's from like Kenya. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I think his dad, yeah, his dad was uh, African. He was from Kenya. Yeah. His Kenya. He certainly was. And his mom was a cornbread White Kansas? Bitch. I yeah. think Kansas, right? You're absolutely right. I believe I know that. You yeah. are Brock then. I'm definitely Bruce. No, I'm more Brock. Yeah, I, I knew you were. All right. You're a statesman. I hate this podcast. Why? That podcast. Oh, the Renegades? Enough of the Renegades. I feel like I had some decent topics and I forgot all of them. Because you really? dosed me with these psychopaths. Oh, things. come on. <laughs> oh, come on. Nothing worse than girl shower. True. What a hell that was. I showered once this weekend due to that. Did you really? Stuck in girl shower. Yeah, can't. Be, it's crazy. Every single girl shower I've been in is one by two feet. Yeah, they'll have it's a ton- smallest thing with filled with bottles. Mm-hmm. There's not one piece of shelf that's open that's not covered with some ridiculous product. Yeah, you can never pace the shower properly. It's just set to scolding. Yep. And the the nozzle itself is set to about four feet, ten inches off the ground. Dude, I get shit for adjusting. And my they nozzle. do nothing about water pressure. Nah. I've never taken a girl shower that had water pressure. Yeah, they have fucked up. They do tend to have fucked up water pressure. That's why they stink. I adjust the nozzle, and Brittany's That's why like, why women stink? Why'd you move the nozzle? And I'm like, because I'm a fucking head taller than you. Yeah. It's like, what are you money? Oh, my crouch? God. There was nozzle talk? Yeah. Somebody was... Obs- I get I get, I get, get <sighs> fucked up from moving the nozzle. I'm like, dude. Clearly That's got, need- you got it. That can't be a battle. No. I would never even notice if somebody adjusted the nozzle. No, dude. I, I just you go... Have to, you have to pin her against the wall if she nope. says that. I just go... I look at her, and I just go... Yeah, I don't know. It's crazy. It's weird. I'd move the nozzle up to my yeah. height. Sorry, babe. Yeah, I told you before, dude. If you fight with a girl, it's your fault. That is true. Still holding it down like that. I'm dude. more of a feminist in that I believe that they're equals and we can talk to them as equals. Mm-hmm. But I do need to come along the line of pure misogyny where it's like, if I'm in a fight with them, it's totally my fault. If you're arguing and yelling, yeah. Yeah, it's like fighting with a four-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, as soon as the voice is raised, this only came from just... I would say a COVID length of med of a mm. strict meditation. Damn. As soon as I catch the the when as soon as I start hearing loudness, it just goes like this. We can't do this right now. Oh, that's actually gonna be that's gonna backfire. Yeah, you women do not like that either. Nah, you need to cool off, dude. Just, just relax. No, they want the fight. True, the that is true. Want. That's true. <laughs> true. Until squawking. you until you bring it to them, they're sitting there squawking, and until then you, you bring, bring the thunder, dude. Then you bring the Moab. Yep. And you hit them with that shock and all. Yep. Like, ah, <laughs> I'm sorry. They start crying. That's their shock and all. True. We can't handle that. What, the cry? The cry? 
Unless you're an ice iceberg, dude. If they start crying, you're like, cry away, bitch. I've been in relationships. I'm watching South Park. <laughs> you're going to tell me to go to bed. I'm bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in relationships where towards the end of it, they bust out the cry and you just go like cold as hell. Yeah, true. You do get cold. I got very fucking like totally. I didn't care at all when someone was crying. Yeah. If she would cry, I'd be like. Oh my god! I can't believe you're crying. Yeah, like, don't like, do, don't do that. Don't, don't fuck it. Don't start crying. Don't do that. Yeah, man. I remember towards the end of relationship, just being like, "Oh, you're gonna cry." I'd be like, all right. But before I'd be like, oh, "I'll drive." Oh man, that's what so you... sad though. It's sad it does, that it gets it there when she starts crying. You're just like, "Oh, break out the waterworks again." Yep. Yeah. You can't just cry and get your way. Oh yeah, dude. It's tough. That is sad. It's also it's a bullshit move, dude. It is a bullshit move. If bullshit we're treating move. them as equals, that's an insane bullshit move. Yeah, no crying. Just, especially after a fight day started. If you fucked up and they start crying, then that's, you know, they catch you in the local paper from getting a hand job. Yeah. They can cry Catch you coming in a sex worker. They're allowed to cry. But if it's yeah. like we're late to this party and she starts crying. Yeah. It's like, bitch, I'm going to drive this car into bitch, a tree. I'll, I'd like <laughs> to kill us both if I could. <laughs> I'll strangle you to death. <laughs> or you just cry harder. It's then like, her. <laughs> true. True. People do that to like babies, you know. <laughs> like anytime, like my nephew gets hurt, I'm like, Wah! and he's like, he really? he's surprised that I'm crying. Really? Yeah. You can trick babies into not crying. I might do that. You just start going, Wah! or you start blowing in their face. You go, <laughs> it snaps them out of it. I might do that. Next do time it. I see a girl cry, I just go <laughs> right in her face. <laughs> what are you doing? It's like, oh, if you can talk, you're not crying. Fake tears? I'm gonna start. You know, people treat like toddlers when they cry. Be like, you fake, are you you're faking, faking it? Were you faking I was it? Be like, Were you faking you're it? Not Come gonna here. get me with those fake tears. Yeah. yeah. Were they alligators? Crocodile? Which one? Crocodile is it? tears. Crocodile. You sure? It looks like Gardini. A bit of a point of contention from the staff here. Oh, really? You think it's alligator? It's crocodile. Afterthought. I agree that it's crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then don't give me those eyes. We're gonna have to work on those. <laughs> just well, see the it. descent. He was like. Really? Yeah, when you said crocodile, it was like, <laughs> damn, dude. Yeah, you should see what these two do behind your back. True, that's true. Episode. I never see them. Do you always do you see me looking at them a lot? I see you people. Yeah, I take I take a gander if the, what we're saying is funny or not. I read the stoners. Do you really? Although Gardini, you're not a bit of a, a doper, are you? Absolutely not. No dope. No, I do. I do mess with dope a little bit. Well, cut it out for the sake of the podcast. Don't dope. I will. Are, are you super high right now? Absolutely not. I ain't come here for no foolishness. Hell yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Off, off to a ripping start. Mm -hmm. Noah, can you say the same? <laughs> Who do I look like? <laughs> Are you high? Are you high off your ass right now? No, I'm not high off my ass. Right. Like a little, Why are you a little high? I'm fine. You know, true. He's I'm, a little, I'm, I'm he's chilling. a bullsmith. Yeah. Just a quick bowl. <laughs> Let me rip a bowl before I do this thing. Yeah. Hey, what's that like? Ripping a bowl before you do things. It just becomes your everyday reality, dude. I've been there for a while. I've knocked it off. Man, I can't. I don't know. I never got there. Just ripping a bowl. Is it fun? It sounds fun. If it's I could control it, that'd be very I, fun. I still suffer. This is part of my cannabis addiction. I still suffer. Like if I have to go to the movies, if I have to go to a movie theater, it kills me if I can't get a little weed in. That fucks me up. That's good. That I think is going to be the hardest thing with quitting dip. I still haven't dipped, mm -hmm. but going to a movie, I love having a dip in a movie. Yeah. It's my favorite. I think it got cemented in my head. Like at first, the first time I actually got stoned, I went to see ET. Like in, when it was in theaters, it like they ET put was it in theaters. And they you got high. They put it back in theaters. <laughs> oh, they reran it. That was like eighty one. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> they re they reran it in theaters back yeah. when I was a youngster. Back when I was uh, when I was up in the freehold of Pennsylvania. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they reran ET, and I got like we, we went and smoked. This kid and stole weed from his dad. And that's like I went into the concession. I remember going to the Damn, concession. Stoner dad? He had a stoner yeah, he had dad. A stoner dad. Disgusting. Yeah, dude. That that was you know because his dad was your dad. Your dad wasn't a doper, was he? No. No. If you bring up weed, dear dad, they're like, "What are you gay?" I don't know. My dad's kind of into it nowadays. Now, they they've come around. Yeah. Now that it's okay, but when they were young, dude, dopers. Dude, ask me what my punishment would be if I got grounded. If I got caught, so if I got caught drinking, grounded, punished for a month. <laughs> I was grounded, yeah. caught drinking. Month was a sentence. If I got caught smoking weed, guess what the sentence was? Grounded for the year. I had they put a death penalty over me. Wow. I'm still stoned, dude. Wow. <laughs> oh, I you're a renegade. No, nah, I mean, I didn't want to say it, but yeah. Very spring scene. No, I would come into my house. Did you ever go in your house when you were younger, like in high school, stoned? 
No, I mean, I would. I always thought I was getting high. I wasn't getting high. Really, I would go in paranoid, but I would. I, I must <laughs> never have like inhaled properly. Mm-hmm. I remember like the first time I got high. Yeah, when I did it right. It was like my freshman year in college, and I was yeah. like, "Oh, this is why." People did because I I had been to, we smoked weed when I was in like fifth grade yeah and I just had to pretend I was high for like six years <laughs> I had to be like well, I love smoking weed <laughs> I'm way more chill right yeah now. you guys ever see the movie Half Baked <laughs> it's like my favorite that and Sublime <laughs> I was never high <laughs> I was like never high once. And Fuck. then, yeah, freshman year in college, I got fucked up. I was like, oh, I can't feel my legs. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is it. Yeah, yeah. I got high enough that I was, like, having trouble walking. Yeah. Yeah. What were you smoking on? I forget. I don't know. What we were smoking out of? Yeah. I don't remember. It was like a bomb. kid I was with was a bit of a wigger, so I'd imagine a blunt. True. They'll do it blunts to Blunts would knock me the fuck. All of a sudden, we smoke blunts constantly. Yeah. Dude, those things are insane. They're crazy. I remember. <laughs> oh, God, dude. Before. All right. Oh. This is how high I used to get. We used to smoke. We would just take gravity bongs constantly. Yep. Every night. We would rip like three of them. Yep. And I was like, yeah, I don't know if I can smoke weed. It's just because for like five years, I was as high as possible. Yeah, gravity bongs are wretched. They were wretched. That's what the guard dog's on. Guard dog, you rip gravity (laughs) (laughs) bongs. That's right, though. You were like what? How old are you? Not to air you out, guard dog. You're 23? Perfect. It's perfect age for grandma. It's about as tight as it gets. It's very, think about it. oh, for sure. <laughs> very economical. Sliding into the dog. Very economical too. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. It's like it's, a bowl pack, right? The size. I mean, it's teeny. They're small. Yeah. It was. It was crazy what that what that did to me. Sorry, guard dog. Part my one part of myself was saying, "Don't put out guard dog's business." And I went, "What? He rips gravity bongs? When, so how fun. often do you do that? What do you do, do that?" <laughs> I think this fucking microdose is <laughs> it's hitting. Does anybody have any incubus to play? <laughs> you are stellar. Um, you smoke gravity bongs. Yeah, yeah, to go to sleep usually. That's what I was doing. Yep. Don't do that. Just I'm Isaac rest, Newton, dude. dude. I love gravity. <laughs> <laughs> you love gravity, <laughs> Sir Isaac Newton. Oh, yeah. Um, I, re- I remember the. Uh, same thing. I smoked it a couple times, and then I went when I went to CET, we like sat in the woods and just got so fucking high. I was probably like fourteen, and I remember I dropped a quarter on the counter, and it just went, ba boom, and hit. And it was like in total slow motion. I was just like, eh. I don't remember the movie at all. I remember just going in there, just being like, really, it was crazy, dude. I think I fully unlocked my schizophrenia. It, like I remember E.T. kind of looked like a cartoon to me. I remember just watching it and being like, well, this looks like a fucking cartoon. <laughs> and I just like, went home and just like <laughs> crawled into my bed and was like. <sighs> yeah. That's usually how that goes. I got yeah. high and saw The Dark Knight. Ooh. That was pretty sick. The opening dark- scene was like an explosion for some reason. Like the, I could have sworn that's how it started. It was like a purple explosion. Sounds sick. I was sick. just like. <laughs> and then word of the shooting happened and I was like. Oh. Really? <laughs> yeah, it was like the night that happened. Oh, was, the people were like looking at their phones. It was like a massive shooting. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I started thinking of dying in a movie theater, like how fucked up that would be. Yeah. Like a tear. Cause that kid had like smoke. Did he, he like, really? Tear, yeah. I think he, he was, I think he was wearing a gas mask. Oh, he, and he like tear gassed the room. Yeah. And then started shooting. Oh, and people were like, yeah, you can't get out. He's like, standing at the exit. Yeah. There's not many exits in there. Yeah. Damn, what an And orange. I was just thinking of how hor- like horrible that in the middle of a movie. Do you think he Joker laughed dead ass? I, I mean, bet he did. I'm being dead ass. He must he, have. You think he was like, yeah. Although this was, <laughs> truthfully, this was opening night. This was like midnight premiere. So he didn't even get to see how sick the Joker actually was. True. I wonder if he got to watch it in prison. I bet think. they gave him a fucking. You think they hooked him up? I hope they didn't. I hope someone was like, no. Yeah, you're not watching Batman. Don't let it. He doesn't get to see this. Dude. He ruined, ruined it. He yeah. ruined it for everybody. Fucking. Arch villain, dude. I wonder how much that fucked up their box office debut. Pretty bad. Because I remember going to the movie after that and being a little like... Dude, I still think about that sometimes. Yeah. Do you think yeah, that was someone from DC Universe? Wait, is Batman DC? Batman that might have been, is That might have been Marvel. That could have been That might have been Stan Lee Lee. Stark. Yeah. Could have been Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> you think Robert Downey Jr. did it? <laughs> yeah, he was a bit of a renegade. True. I think his vices were pussy and drugs. Yep. Real renegade, you know, outsider. Those stuff. vices that everyone has. True. What a cross to bear. True that. 
what else is going on? I don't know. I, I went to sleep to a nice audio book about death on the Eastern Front in yeah, World that was, War II. Yeah, that was intense, man. That was a pretty wacky one to go to sleep to. I, I, just, I was looking for a new book. I didn't have anything I wanted to get into. So I stuck with the old tried and true Eastern Front World War II. Yeah. Pretty sick. Yeah, it's also weird, dude. People for there's so many people who hate Nazis, which is like, you know, shout out, knock yourself out. But then they're like they're into Stalin. And it's like, dude, oh, you, yeah. you can't hate Nazis. I was, while you're I was loving hoping Stalin that went there. Mao. Oh yeah. <laughs> I sure. was a little like there's a lot of guys these days hating Hitler. I'm like, I'm, like I should be funny, be like, I'm glad you're getting the real facts what happened. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, that is an interesting thing when people like are into Mao or into like like brother, comrade. Yeah. It's like, dude, they get a lot of people too. Yeah, chill on that. It kind of stunk. Yeah. Stunk big time. Yeah, even seeing flags with the hammer and sickle. It's like, yo, chill, chill, chill. Yeah. How about that dude in the uh, Adam Curtis thing who like started a party that was half hammer sickle? True. Half and, Nazi. And Nazi. He's like, I'm a Nazi and a communist. And people were like, all right. He's like, whoa. It's pretty easy to get Russians fired That's basically up. goth. He was essentially like, I'm so spooky. Yeah, It's that's just true. a version. It's a political version of like... Yeah, <laughs> it's like, what's the worst two things? I'm them. <laughs> I'm gonna parade in your street. And his Russian teenagers were like, well, perfect. Russian, yeah, right. I mean, what the fuck else were they doing? It is funny when all those people eventually rise up. They did it in like Mao's China. Uh, when they start rising up against him, like, this is fucking bullshit. Yeah, it's fucking bullshit. They go in and storm. Didn't they storm uh, that one building? They stormed the Ministry of Economics or something. I'm not sure. Oh, of in Finance. Russia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just they dudes all just... hanging out the windows with like flares. Yep, that was fucking. <laughs> I fucking ruled. <laughs> you just gotta stand there for no reason. You just gotta stand, dude. Nothing was sicker than fucking Putin's squad, Putin's security team. Was... I didn't get that. I'm on the very oh, last episode. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I saw... It is the last episode. Yeah, I saw the journalist who was negative against Putin got fucking of course sprayed up. Oh, you're getting close. She got sprayed up. Putin dude. announces his new head of security is this biker gang, what? and they do a whole Russian biker gang like concert what the yeah fuck? it's fucking sick a bunch of dudes come out on harleys yeah which is kind of like the most american thing possible a biker yeah. gang yeah big time they're just totally jacking our swag yeah that's kind of everybody true. appropriates our culture true our culture yeah all of ours us all of us we all worked on it together here big in time. america big time big time I'm sick of the belly aching <laughs> 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 um where are we at time wise? Because this was Hour a wacky one. And nine. Woo! Exactly Two weeks right. Two in a row, baby. Hour ten. Hour ten. Ah, he's trying. He's got his Apple Watch. He's cheating. Not about cheating. I, <laughs> I knew you were going to react like that. <laughs> call me a <laughs> goddamn liar. You lied on the. You call me a goddamn liar. That's all. If you like accuse Matt of like something that's like dishonorable, he will be like, "What? I'm not a liar. It's my honor, dude. True. It's all it, I have. It's fun. True. It's all I have is my goddamn honor. All I have is that. And my, my respect, name, dude. My, my outsider name, status. My outside. I'm a renegade too. Big time. I'm actually kind of big well, time. Hopefully, we'll see. Hopefully, one day I can have a podcast with Barack Hussein Obama. He, I think he'd be down to sit with us. I think we would get it. Yeah, I think he'd be happy to sit here. Uh, dude, I'm telling you, pull some strings. You know me. Come on, baby. EP. <laughs> um. Well, that's the end of this episode, yep. I believe. Patreon's gonna be nice. Patreon might, we might have, we'll see. We'll see how the Patreon goes. This could be the, we'll see. Never know. Patreon's gonna be, Patreon's gonna be a good one. Well, toss out some stuff just in case. I can tell. Toss out, what stuff? Dates, dude. Dates, yeah. Yeah. Uh, March 5th and 6th, I'll be at Bananas Comedy Club in Hasbrook Heights, New Jersey. The 18th, 19th, and 20th of March, I'll be at Helium, Indianapolis. The 26th of, this is the big one. I think it's in Auburn, Alabama. The 26th and 27th of March, I'll be at the Crown of Comedy. If you ever want to see Problem Child, yes, dude, that's the one. Really? Because I've looked at that comedy club's <laughs> website, and um, it's just black dudes. Really? It's just 100% a black club, which is sick. And I'm very happy that my agent felt like I was good for that. You, Dude, you crush in black rooms. Yeah, but black people aren't going to buy tickets when they see my fucking headshot. I think they will. I think they will. I'm telling you. All right. Well, if they do, that'll be... I'm going to have to change my act. No way, dude. Slightly. Dude. Have you, dude. You'll be having a good old time. All right. I'm telling you, man. They're going to be having a fun old time. I hope so. Dude, I've But seen, I've, yeah. I've my material you. has changed since then. Don't matter, since bro. Since I used Yo, to be that. It's you, dude. True. It's you they like. Come on, dude. Anyway. Catch me could... April 4th. I'll be in Freehold, New Jersey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Walking with my hands in my pockets. <laughs> Just being like, ooh. 
a one. Oh, never mind. That's that's a little far off. In the I distance. think Mark Wahlberg's also starting a podcast or something. Someone sent me a thing. It's crazy. When we started, we were like, when we started like four years ago, four and a half years, we were like, doing podcasts is hack. Everybody's already doing it. Yep. It's fucking gay. Look at us now. Now people are just starting. But if you're famous and you start a podcast, it's like, it's pretty good. Like, if you look at the top charts, it's like everybody from the show, The Office. The friend. Yeah, the started o- their the own office. podcast. It's yeah, like, I saw that. Shut the fuck up, dude. Yeah. Kevin, the fat guy, has a podcast that? Which one's that? The fat guy. From The Office? Yeah. His own podcast or is it office <laughs> yeah, related? It's just him. It's office related. They're all office related. Yeah, they, they bring office stars back and they're like, remember that episode? Yeah. It's a big Member Berries podcast. It's total here. Member Berries. It's like, remember that time? I, I remember like three years ago when no one talked about The Office. Yeah. Maybe it was like five years ago at this point. Yeah. There was a dead period where The Office was just no one cared. And then all of a sudden it. it got brought back by maybe Netflix. It's corporate Somebody propaganda. Somebody brought it back and now everyone's yeah. like, I, that's my favorite show. Yeah. They got the bays hard, dude. Yeah. The white bays. Absolutely. All the white bays got tricked into it. Yeah, dude, they brought up so they brought up that podcast today. I'm driving with Bay and she was like, I've never seen The Office. I'm like, we're not we're not doing We're not it. getting into it. She'll Although The Office does through. rule. It was good. It was, it was very funny, funny. But she'll saw through an entire series and it's like, you know, I can't be having off it. That it's a lot that's many seasons, dude. That's video games for white women. They all complain about us playing Call of Duty. Dude. It's like, dude, you will have The Office on for an entire season, every day they'll just press play on their Netflix and then go about their their day. They'll be they're sewing or what have you. Yep. Whatever they do, yeah. Preparing crockpot meals, sewing, <laughs> classic Bay stuff. Dude, I've I've brought that point up before. I'm what? like, dude, if I were to play video games, the amount you watch TV, you'd it would be a problem. And it was just. I wish someone would come at me for playing video games. A Bay, yeah. a lady. Yeah, you play too much video games. About I'll kill you with a gun. They crush TV. <laughs> they crush TV. They do. It's it's crazy. Yeah, like they'll watch shit like three times. I'm like <laughs> turn this shit off. You already seen it. It, it bothers me. I'm like you have already seen this. I watched the Steve Bannon interview a couple times. There's I've showed two different people. Did you really? Sat there and watched. Oh, you're it watching with, it with someone else. It with him, like. Oh, you're watching them. Did watching you hear that part? <laughs> so what he's trying to say? Oh, dude, I did that. Oh. You thought you thought I was going into girl hell. What happened? I brought the light with me. Did you really? And I made Bay watch Adam Curtis, and I was like, "Watch it. This is what he's saying right now." I did exactly what everyone makes fun of, which is guys making people watch it and explaining it to them. That's awesome. It's embarrassing in hindsight. I try- I think we're gonna look back, and it's gonna be like when you would listen to rap with your friends and pause it and be like, "You hear those lyrics right there?" Oh. I think we're gonna look back, and it'll have the same level of like, "Man, I was so fucking gay for that." No way. I believe. And I'm with Adam Curtis, dude. Listening to rap and being like, oh, dude, he's such a fucking lyricist, dude. <sighs> I've been there. Yeah. We all were there. I've, I've, we I've definitely said at one point being like, I need, I just like listen to lyricists, dude, like real rappers. Oh, yeah. that hurts. I've definitely had those yeah, insane dude. thoughts and I've said them publicly. <laughs> I've said them to people. I've been like, listen to just Lupe Fiasco's lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a song about skateboarding. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> All, right. All right. We we are going on to the Patreon. Join us there, please. Yes. 